Now, can family planning save the planet? An environmental charity says stopping people having children is better than investing in wind or solar power. A group behind an initiative to cut carbon emissions says contraception is one of the cheapest ways to tackle global warming. Well, joining me now is Sir Jonathan Porritt, a patron of the Optimum Population Trust, who put forward the proposal on their website. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. So, uh, hand out contraception. It's much easier than uh, solar power, is it? It would be effective and it would be cheaper. And the thinking behind this is very simple. We've got to find whatever ways we can of reducing emissions of these greenhouse gases. And we have to do it as cost effectively as possible. Now, there are millions and millions of people all around the world who would love to have fewer children. This is the so-called unmet demand issue. And we need unmet need issue. And what we have to do is to enable them to have access to contraception in exactly the right kind of way that helps from an education point of view, a healthcare point of view, and so on. And if we do that, it's our calculation that there would be 500 million fewer people by 2050 than there would be otherwise. And each of those people who would have been born otherwise would have had a carbon footprint. But who are you targeting in this? Is this uh, poorer nations or is this worldwide? Most of the unmet need is in the poorer nations. And there's no doubt that in terms of the international support for family planning programs, that's where the investments have to be made. We've seen ridiculous reductions in support for family planning over the last 10, 15 years. But the Optimum Population Trust is very clear about this. This isn't just an issue for poorer developing countries. This is an issue for the rich world as well. And we would like to see countries like the UK and the US where we've still got rising population, we'd like to see them address these issues at the same time. It is a, it's a global problem. Yes, because, I mean, you look at America, for example, they are now, what, the second biggest emitter of CO2, yet they have the biggest carbon footprint per Indeed. person. I don't think they would take too kindly, though, to uh, suggestions that they should stop having as many children. Well, most people find this a very difficult issue to deal with because I think they're incapable of being logical about it. Every person on the planet has a carbon footprint. Some people's footprint is much, much bigger than other people's. But we have to remember that even in the poor countries, their carbon footprint is getting bigger. 20 years ago, China's carbon footprint was very low. Now it's four and a half tons per person. So the fact that there are fewer people in China now than there would have been without their family planning policy is a very important statistic to bear in mind. We have to work this out logically from the perspective of the most cost-effective, compassionate, interventions to secure these low carbon benefits and similarly at the same time health and education benefits for the poor world. Sir Jonathan Porritt, thank you very much for joining us.